What I was going to go to next, um, so now that we've kind of into the blocks, put animals on it, grown some pasture, you can actually, so if you look at any supplements that you've taken off, um, you, uh, and, and you can import supplements that you haven't grown on farm. So if you've uh, bought in um, any, uh, what have we got, any hay bought off farm or grains, um, Thank God for it, we've got palm kernel. Um, so there's a whole lot of, a, mm -hmm. as you kind of click through, yep. um, you can it'll give you a whole heap of options. Mm -hmm. And at the moment we don't have custom supplements, so if you've got a special sheep nut mix, mm -hmm. uh, we don't have that custom ability built in, okay. um, but we are working on it. Yep. So overseer is um, in, in background and development based on uh, user feedback, if it makes sense, um, we're building it as we go. Yeah, but in the meantime, just if it's not there, find something that's pretty close. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, even just make a note of, of what assumptions mm -hmm. you've made there so you can justify it when you go back. So yeah, if Overseer adds it at some stage, you could go back, update your model from a couple of years ago or, or whatever. Yep. Yep. Um, so you can add that, that feed so that it gives you kind of a bit of an indication of what you think the quality is. Um, mm -hmm. This is this is some of the, one of the things that isn't auditable, but it goes on that common sense principle. Mm -hmm. um, so if you know you've actually got in some good quality hay, then put that in. Um, you can um, put supplements based on actual weight or bale mm -hmm. size. Um, volume of material, what have we got there? Yeah. So it, it is kind of um, that one for loosen. Um, so you can look at it. It's if you don't know the actual weight, mm -hmm. um, or if you can't figure that out, you can go bale size, overseer will work that, the drometer out mm -hmm. for you. So there's a lot of work that goes on in the background. Um, this so isn't one where, uh, so you just got the, the type, it doesn't have within that, you know, ME, protein, all those sorts of things. We just Overseer has defaults, that's yeah. what's in the background. So, but those aren't customizable nope. in this case? Yep. No. So if you know you've got roughly bought in five tons of hay, mm -hmm. Um, so you add that in. Um, dry weight, wet weight, um, kind mm -hmm. of. This might be by an invoice, but it just kind of goes on on what you can. And. And same there, Carly. For, so baleage or silage, it has a default dry matter percentage. Yes. Yep. Um, so when you've kind of added that, it gives you a bit of an indication at the top that you haven't actually distributed that that feed. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have an option of you can either distribute it to animals and paddocks, mm -hmm. to blocks, or if you've got uh, a feed pad. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'll do is put the whole lot. Just well, as you, do, you can though have it on hand at the end of the year? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You can actually send that. Um, whatever's left at hand will go to storage. Okay, yep. Um, so uh, that's the, the type of thing, the same type of thing as with the animals. If it hasn't been, um, if you've bought on feed and you haven't actually used it on farm that in that year, don't put it in because mm -hmm. it hasn't entered the nutrient cycle. If you've, mm -hmm. you've harvested it and you haven't fed it out, put it to storage. So look at kind of yep. what's going on the farm at all times. Um, and that'll bring through... I'm going to feed it to the sheep. So you can add it to the <coughs> whichever stock type you have, mm -hmm. and you can either kind of, if you just feed out the hay, um, sorry, the utilisation, this is where okay. m one of those common sense things. Mm -hmm. So if it's just fed off the back of the truck, look at average, um, but if maybe if you're using um, the waste not feeders or whatever it may be, mm -hmm. um, there are definitions that go in behind that. Um, but it's like once again, those once one of those common sense. Um, and uh, so, if hay, if you just know that you just feed out hay as you need throughout the year, then just leave it uh -huh. as throughout the year. But if you actually know that I'm only feeding that um, during winter, uh -huh. and then you leave a little bit for summer. Uh -huh. And then these are one of those. Uh, if you don't, if you're not quite sure, go with your common sense, uh -huh. um, and it won't let you go through unless you've um, distributed the whole lot. So this is another one. Is it where you're talking about the typical rather than the individual year? So you don't have to fill in your feed um, feeding out every single year. You're saying on oh, my typical year would be absolutely. This, yeah. 
Um, and so you can see now that we've um, imported the hay. So at the top of every page is gives you an indication of what you've done. Mm -hmm. And then that's when you just go and double check that. Um, actually, I have distributed the the hay to the she uh, sheep to the hay. No, wait, hay to the sheep. <laughs> Um, and it'll show up on every block and that's we if you actually know that it hasn't been fed on that block mm -hmm. you can change it so that's when you go through and and you know that have a look it gives you a visual representation of what you've done if it's not correct change it mm -hmm. if it is the average year just leave it as it is um, and once again it kind of the, the model's still running there's no leftover um, exclamation points at the top I'll just go through quickly um, for those farmers in Southland. You can add mole and tile dra drainage, so mm -hmm. you can have different add dra different drainage types. So most of the land management practice um, that you do on farm can be bought through, mm -hmm. um, and especially drainage is quite important. So you can just add that, um, and you can do it by block. So you can add it if you know the block is only fifty percent drained, then add that in. Mm -hmm. The last. Um, have a look at um, fertilizer. So when you add your fertilizer um, application, uh, we've got different types. You can add fertilizer, lime, um, organic, so that's your compost, mm -hmm. um, and soluble. Um, so what we're looking at is uh, kind of what you've added. So this is kind of where your invoice from your fertilizer company comes in quite handy. Yes. Uh, you can have a look at the tonnages. So it, it, it's for that year. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can have a look and see, do these tonnages match what my invoice says? Okay, so this is one where you should be using the individual year's data, not typical? No, it's it's still... Typical's fine? Typical's yeah. fine. But if you do have the individual year, like a, yeah, the invoice from your... That's kind company. of, if you're, um, for a consent, it will have mm -hmm. to be kind of what you actually put on. If okay. you're looking at uh, comparing years for decision support, yep. look at typical. Mm -hmm. Um, so it might be one of those things if you put um, nitrogen on in winter when you usually mm -hmm. wouldn't. Uh, it depends for the consent you put it in, but for average year, um, don't. Yeah, yeah. So just want to. I'm sorry to harp on that, but barring you know specific demands from a regulator or something like that, the, the model would we'll just work on typical. Absolutely. Yeah. Makes it easier. Yeah. So what you can do is we've added. What's that? Fifteen percent potash serpentine super. Um, you can do it by company, so we've got uh, some companies in there, mm -hmm. um, and you can put in custom fertilizer. So if you've got a custom mix, you can mm -hmm. define that, or if you use one of the these companies that we have in there, and we do have Biofoss in there, mm -hmm. um, so you can look at one of their products and add it in. Mm -hmm. um, and when you go for the what do they put cropping, it'll bring through the all the products that they have in there. So if you have added something like, um, what you can do is you can either add it to the crop mm -hmm. or add it to the pasture. Yes, yeah, so that bring, when you say adding to the crop, as in does it matter whether it was bulk spread or went down the spout, is that taken on or is it just what the product is and where it was applied? You can, um, it's just what it was applied yeah. to. And that'll bring through the, the, the NPKS mm -hmm. and the total. So if you've done 100 kilos per head per month, um, it'll bring through the total use for you. Yep. yep. So sorry, Kate, on that one as well. So if somebody's using like fine paddle application or something like that, it doesn't, the application method's not the key. It's how much fertilizer of what type went where, not, yes. not how you spread it, spun it, drilled it. Yep. Cool. Um, and then you kind of put it to the month that it was got, that, that had gone on. Mm -hmm. And once again, hit save. And so that's brought it through for us. Yep. Um, you can't cut a corner here and import it from any of the fertilizer companies directly? Not, not yet, but we're working on it. Okay. Yep. Um, and once you've added that information, one of the, the quite interesting things that have been brought through is, so what you can see here is the total nutrients added mm -hmm. um, to that block. So each block has its own total nutrients added. 
Um, so this is where you can double check the uh, other MPKs that you've you've added here. Are they correct? Mm -hmm. But what Oversee does in the background is um, what is needed for maintenance, maintenance nutrients. Mm -hmm. So this is where you can look at um, your uh, PKS. That this is driven by what you need to maintain the, mm -hmm. the current conditions. Yep. Um, so this is kind of where your fertilizer recommendation comes in. So if you're looking at um, what fertilizer do you need in the future mm -hmm. to ma either maintain where you're at mm -hmm. um, or improve. Uh, this is what, it, so you'll need 15 kilos of, of phosphorus to go on this block to maintain where it currently mm -hmm. is. Um, and this is in a different spot from Legacy. Uh, we've brought it through into here so the fertilizers and the maintenance and the nutrients are all on one page. Yeah. So excuse my question here, but where you've got total nutrients, that's not just fertilizer applications. No, this is just bit. fertilizer. It is just fertilizer? Okay. Yep. yep, so you've got, I just noticed you've got a very high end figure there, but this has had a lot of... Yep, that's, that's had some in applied. Um, ah, okay, yep. I see. So that's, yep. so that's, sort of, that's where it is. That's exactly yep. what you should be looking at. Is, is this number here? If it mm -hmm. looks a bit weird, double check what's going on. And because the information is visually right there for you to check, mm -hmm. you can actually say, oh, actually, I did put that on. Um, I see. Yep. Or if, if it's snuck through and you've made a mistake, just take it out. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll come through for, for the blocks. But it won't come through for the uh, the maintenance nutrients won't come through for through for the fodder crops. It's just for pasture. And why is that? Uh, because the the way that the crop requirements are worked out is different from the way the pasture, uh, okay. the way the model works around pasture and works around crops is slightly different. Okay. Um, the 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 cropping works on a mass balance. So what does the crop take off in a particular year? Um, and what's returned. So because because you're not in a steady state, although mm -hmm. you might, even if you had kale every year, because that fodder block is rotating around the blocks, okay. then, then it's not giving you a maintenance yep. requirement, it's purely applied to the pasture blocks. Gotcha. Cool. Um, and I think the last thing I was going to take a look at was irrigation. And this is where you can add um, <coughs> different irrigation types. If, if your farm has irrigation, um, if not, just skip it. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where we've been able to bring through, so you can actually draw on the map, um, mm -hmm. so the blocks that you've mapped before, you can draw on a, a centre pivot or a, a um, K lanes, wherever it may be. Mm -hmm. We've brought through this function of being able to draw the circle of a centre pivot. Um, one of those things where it doesn't have to be actually perfect. Yep. Um, so kind of centre it where you think it is and draw the circle. If it doesn't quite match what you're doing, then that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but this is... Yeah, sorry, carry on. <laughs> this is where <laughs> common sense there's, a question, there's a question coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can ha add the centre pivot where it is, and you can also add in, um, so if you've got guns in here, this is where you can also add in different areas. Mm -hmm. So for the guns, for K-lines and border dikes, you can draw irregular shapes again Absolutely. on that. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yep. um, Can you do a, a half pivot, so the window wiper one? Only manually. Manually, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so it'll just do a full. Maybe maybe pivot. just draw it as a smaller pivot would be the probably again. It's because yep. it's this visual representation of your farm. It doesn't have to be an exact spatial mm -hmm. definition of it. So maybe just draw a half size pivot yep. and, and and plonk that where the where the semicircle is. Yep. And um, once you've kind of drawn it on, you can uh, look at the months that you've applied irrigation. Mm -hmm. And this is where you can kind of bring through more information. So if you've got um, soil moisture probes, or if it's a mm -hmm. fixed depth return period, uh, there are definitions that sit in behind that, mm -hmm. um, that will be available in the Overseer RFM user guide. Mm -hmm. um, but you can choose what you base it on. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where you can kind of add and once again, it's a, it's a typical year mm -hmm. for, for irrigation. So if your um, irrigation management, so if you usually put on irrigation from October to, to May, mm -hmm. then do that. Um, if you have a wet year and it's actually being limited, I would always go for the, the average year because the climate data is, is based on an average year. It doesn't look at if you've had a drought or if it's been unusually mm -hmm. wet. So what we're driving is, is what you typically would put on. Mm -hmm. And overseer is not going to punish you for a wet year. Okay. And on the flip side of that, so you've got um, variation in how fast a K line will return, you know, on the shady side versus sunny side and variable rate pivots. I don't want to get into all the intricacies, mm -hmm. but it has the ability for you to account for that in 
and the stuff you had before, yep. it was around whether you put it on a set amount or whether you're irrigating to deficit or things like that. It's so the model's it, taking it, into account all of those things yeah. in the background. So it doesn't it default does. and say you are putting on X amount of water. You can modify it to your situation. Yep. Is basically yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and it's one of those things where if you want to override that management defaults, the defaults that sit in behind yeah. overseer, you can add more information. Yep. But once again, it's what you can prove and what's oh, common sense. What's auditable, yeah. So the one that occurred to me, I know certainly K-Line and the sheep and beef farms will often have, for example, 120 hectares covered by hydrants, but at one time they're only irrigating 100 hectares. You yeah. can cope with that sort of farmer ingenuity? You can block that out differently. Yeah. 